Have you ever wondered to yourself, am I going to hell for the choices I make in a video game? Yeah, I hadn't either. Until today. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Provis, and welcome to Crusader Kings 3, where today I am collaborating with Paradox Interactive to show you the new Roads to Power DLC and some of the pretty twisted, crazy stuff you can do as a landless character. Yes, you heard me correctly, a landless character. It is a completely new way of enjoying Crusader Kings 3, and it can get pretty nuts as either a wanderer or even a Byzantine governor. Now, of course, the DLC is coming out tomorrow. If you guys would like to learn more, there will be a link in the description down below. Now, while there are a number of pre-built characters we could enjoy in 1066, I'm gonna create my own custom character in the 1178 start. How about Renard de Castellet, a young character in Aragon who is going to have a strong focus on being an intrigue character, winning people over to his side with ambition and gregariousness to then stab them in the back. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. What the heck are you wearing? Renard, don't do this. We're gonna change his clothes. I don't care what people say, fashion matters much better. Okay, so we're gonna be starting off with very humble origins. A very humble camp with a few tents and a couple of camp followers, and we will choose the intrigue focus. These guys are like your courtiers, and you'll be able to use them for various different officer positions within your company. We can also find our camp, currently located in the capital of Aragon in Zaragoza, and click on this to see our entire setup. It's nothing quite so permanent as an estate, but it is a place where I will be able to focus my money and my efforts in order to make myself more powerful and influential in some way. For example, we have some extra domicile buildings that we could place down, like a supply tent, or a baggage train, or a campfire, a proving ground, all things that could be very useful to increase my power and effectivity in different ways. And best of all, this camp is mobile, so if I want to, I could say, hey, let's go somewhere else and do something. And that's especially important for us, because as you'll notice, we are not a lord, and that means I have no income, no taxes. So if we want to increase our fame and fortune, we're going to have to move from place to place and take on different contracts offered by the local nobility. Some of these are very simple, like escorting emissaries, and others are going to be based on certain skill checks, like your stewardship or your intrigue. Now, a fun little thing about your camps is you can decide what kind of contracts you really want to obtain. Right now, we are simple wanderers, an equal chance of finding any different kind of contract, and there are many in the game. We could also become Swords for Hire, basically our own mercenary company, and get a lot of martial and prowess-based contracts. We could become scholars, we could become explorers, we could do a lot of different things, but we could also be freebooters. Criminals! There's a lot of risk to do in this, but I think this is the direction we're going to go for this video, because I'll tell you what most YouTubers are going to do when this DLC comes out. They're going to work their way to becoming legitimists, another special type of goal for your camp, which means if you have a press claim, you can try to basically steal a kingdom. You will become the adventurer that every emperor fears. But I like being a little bit different, and I think maybe living on the wrong side of the law could be kind of interesting. But first, we'll take on some honest work and escort these people to Leon. Now, as you do travel, there's a very good chance you are going to get a number of special events, including some interesting characters you can meet, maybe even hire into your camp if you are lucky. In this case, it might make sense to try and get this character, Gerardo, to join my camp since he has at least some decent martial and prowess skill. And I could really use an errant knight. And we've successfully convinced him he has become a knight. Thank you. You shall become my bodyguard. Found another man over here, Silu. Oh, a wise man. Well, we could get our fortune taken, but if he's willing to join me, somebody with really good stewardship and learning skill could come in handy. Ooh, but not all the adventures we have on the road are great. Apparently there's a man-eating beast striking in the area. Well, we could tighten the watch, and there's a very strong chance that people are going to die. Um, we could also say, screw it, I will take the risk and see if we can kill the beast. And depending on what it is, which we don't know, this might be fine. Now hey, let's try it. It's a bear! Oh good! We're very likely to die! Oh no, but we got it! The beast falls to my numbers! Alright, that was a little bit of a stupid risk for a 17-year-old, but hey, this gets me some prestige. In the meantime, we made it to Leon, which means I actually do have an exceptional success and we get some extra money. Before I accept any additional contracts, why don't we instead go to the local castle holding and see if we can't recruit some interesting new people. 
For example, we can walk inside the Leon Castle, something new that wandering landless characters are able to do. We could visit the local training grounds, have a little bit of a training session, increase my own prowess. Maybe even try to convince their Master of Arms to join us, if I had a proving ground, which I don't. Could also look for some people in the garrison that we could hire, or we could just gamble for a little bit, see if we can get some money. Or I find it is usually worthwhile visiting the local tavern. Sometimes you can listen to a little story, for example, and maybe get some extra lifestyle experience, or gain a trait, Hastilider, or however you're supposed to say that, a participation in martial games. Now, one thing that's interesting about a lot of these traits is you actually do need to gain experience within the trade itself before you're gonna gain any sort of benefit. So for example, if we were to work down this trait and get more experience in the foot, the bow, the horse, or in wits, you can see we would get levels, which can give you some pretty powerful bonuses, which I'll just go ahead and grab with a little bit of wit experience. Thank you very much. For now though, I don't wanna spend any of my money. Let's go to our camp itself and see if there's anything we want to buy. I feel like you can never go wrong getting something like a supply tent in order to unlock a quartermaster as your officer. Could also go for something like a roaring campfire. Yeah, we'll just go for the supply tent for now. Seems fine. Also, I'm gonna rename my band. We're just gonna call it something a little bit creepy like uh, the Blue Hand. Now, let's fulfill my goal of becoming a dastardly criminal worthy of fear amongst the nobility. We're gonna abduct, I don't know, somebody important, some skilled hunters, apparently. Shouldn't take us very long to get there, and now we're gonna have some hostile acquisitions. All right, so this is gonna open up one of the new scheming systems that are in the game. See, right now, our success chance is relatively low, though we do have a lot of secrecy working for us. The different approaches to reach our target are gonna require different types of jobs in order to fulfill. So for example, if we focus mostly on secrecy, we need to have a couple of lookouts, a decoy, a thug, and a footpad, as opposed to just kind of using a balanced range of contributions, thugs, and muscles, right? And this does depend a lot on who makes up your camp. Since I know I have a decent number of intrigue characters in my crew, we're gonna go for a secrecy focus here and pause the game and assign people to this job. Now we can see exactly how much they are going to contribute. And the different jobs, of course, do depend on different skill sets, so you can see that Gotruda would actually be most valuable, actually, as... Well, I was gonna say a decoy, but apparently she's a really good thug. That's surprising. Anyway, assigning all of these people means I have an extremely high secrecy rate, so the odds of me failing this particular job seem fairly low. That said... Oh, but he just immediately died. What? Hey! Look, boss, I'm sorry, but if the target drops dead before I can bag him, it's hardly my fault, now is it? Fine, we'll find a totally different thing. Murder a foe. That seems easier than abduction. Maybe this time we try focusing on success chance. You think that's gonna work? We'll give that one a go. So the way this is gonna be, though, not only do you have the five different positions, but notice you have a certain amount of time before some phases are going to hit. And in order to actually execute a scheme, it doesn't just happen now on its own based on a percentage success chance. You need to start getting some advantages. And that is actually what your five agents are going to do. Generate some scheme advantages. The more of them you have, the better off because you can use them to seize the moment or execute with confidence and so on and greatly increase your success chance right then and there. So now we're gradually increasing our success chance right here, which is great. And I've currently got a good three scheme advantages. I need to get myself up to five. That's good enough. Ruin rumbling, scouting ahead of the camp, I come across a ramshackle collection of traitors. Good God, where did that manly beard come from? <laughs> you look like a young Santa Claus with a club. I don't think you've earned that yet. Let's give you just a, something a bit shorter. Anyway, now that we have five advantages, we've kind of maxed out our success chance. I think we should go ahead and execute the scheme. Do it now! There we go, we have murdered this fool. I get 124 gold for our dark deed. Nice. However, I've also gained the Gallows Bait traits. This is another one of those traits that has multiple different levels that you can upgrade. We can be a bandit, a trickster, a thief, a poacher, in our case, a marauder. This is a little bit risky in a lot of ways because now we are basically a wanted criminal. And the more we level this up, the worse that's going to be. So we will have to be fleeing from the law at all times. But we can get some pretty nice little boosts here. Increase our murder scheme potential, right? That's a thing. Becoming a thief greatly increases your scheme secrecy. 
bandits increase your prestige the more dreadful you are, right? I don't know if any of this is like actually good, but we actually get to be the force of evil that we have to deal with as a feudal lord all the time, and it feels good to be on the other side. And what else could we do? We can mug a wealthy citizen. Eh, sure, another prowess contract. Ooh, but we did just visit a location, the Roman Walls of Lugo. I will come back to this, but there are many different places that you can visit as a traveler, and this can give you some nice little benefits. Anyway, let's see. We need to get ourselves a good couple of very talented thugs to boost our success chance. I also want to reduce the time between scheme progress. So let's get a decent person there. Yeah, this seems pretty decent. We can have a maximum success chance of 80%. Not bad. Oh, a back alley robbery opportunity against a mare. Knives out. Let's do this quiet but clear. Shadow him. There we go. Or show him true fear. No, no, we'll just shadow him. I am a shadow in the night. There we go. 70 more gold. Another mare that- How many mares are in this one city? I don't know, but shadow them all! Another all- I, I, Apparently if I just sit around inside of a town long enough, I will just find people to steal from. Like, non-stop. This is hilarious. Now, with our first intrigue talent, what could I do? Obviously going down schemer could be kind of useful. Abduct schemes and stuff like that. Search for secrets as we travel around. Things we can do to go ahead and just extort people. We can also go down the torture route to crime pays. Criminal contract gold rewards are doubled. Now there's an option for us. Oh my god! Long Pig enables the turn into mystery meat execution method. Turn prisoners into provisions? What? Jasons, dude, this just seems messed up. Okay, I will become dreadful. I don't know if I care about the cannibalism, but I at least like the idea of extra money. Anyway, let's go ahead and execute the scheme with 15 advantages, 89% success chance. There we go. All right, thanks to Count Fernando's utter inability to enforce order on the streets, the blue hand can shake down pretty much everybody. Honorable? Nah, but profitable? Yes. So now I'm officially a bandit, and I'm officially a marauder, so I get a little bit of extra martial skill. People are not liking me quite so much. Landholders really don't. And for a marauder, we get more prowess. Cool. I guess we could afford to get some additional upgrades for our camp. Let's go ahead and upgrade our pavilion to level two, letting us store up some extra provisions, have men-at-arms regiments, and so on. What other horrible things can I do? I could go burn down someone's house. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, incendiary talk in Zamora. Close to nightfall, a small band of my followers and I await in the shadows. Not far from our target, a humble wayside church. I'm gonna burn a church to the ground. Why? All right, well, sure, preserve our anonymity. Stay quiet, we're away as soon as the fire is taken. Great success, give me money. Another errant knight is available to join me. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I could always use a little bit more hired muscle. <laughs> you you don't really believe in all that chivalry crap, do you? Now, one thing to point out, I said that there were a lot of different places that you can visit in this game. And examples would be over here, for example, there's a point of interest, Akruna, over here. Or there's also going to be Lisboa, which is the capital of an important realm, right? All these places that you can reach... And these can give you some little bonuses for visiting them. So for example, maybe instead we do just go ahead and travel down here to Lisboa real quick. Now that does cost me provisions, so it's a little risky to do that, but we can. There we go, we visit the capital of Portugal, and I get 200 martial lifestyle experience for free. Just like that. We have to be careful to plot out our routes as we travel now though. Because we're gallows bait, traveling through major cities is increasingly risky. We want to go around them whenever we can. There we go, visit the city walls of Toledo, visit the Kingdom of Castile. Yep, lots of free experience, and that's a whole perk, just like that, from only a few days of moving around. See, this is the great thing about being a wanderer. You can make your fortune just like experiencing the world. You don't have to worry about your lands. Who needs to be tied down by property and responsibilities? Nonsense. Ooh, we can heist a treasury. Yeah, sure, let's do that. And we've got some really talented teams right now who can boost up our success chance and our speed dramatically. Look at that. Up to 100% success chance if we sit on this long enough now. This is why you want to have a crew. It's like Ocean's Eleven. But, you know, it's Boss Renard of the Blue Hand. Now you might be wondering, what are some of the ultimate goals of being an adventurer? 
Oh, there's quite a few options here. Become a great conqueror, right? Gain the conqueror trait. This can be extremely strong. We could champion a particular culture. We could become the Knight of the Swan and become a Knight Errant. What I'm going for, though, is to levy the outcasts. I will become the master of the gutter's sons and daughters. An army of the most heinous scoundrels bound to my cause and whim. In a word, I will become the Bandit King. And to become the Bandit's benefactor could be pretty strong. Every time we complete an intrigue contract, we get a unique men-at-arms. Like, <laughs> Free units? Alright. I just have to be really experienced in everything. Bandit, thief, poacher, marauder, and trickster. Assuming I survive whatever this illness is, we can do that. Alright, we have stolen successfully from the Count. If we want, we can even try to steal more. What a rube. You know, there's plenty more, huh? Ooh, up to 270 lootable gold in the area. Ooh. Ooh. More experience, too. Double back to the castle! Loot some more! We filled our pockets with silver coins stolen straight from the treasury already, but there might be even more in the castle. Do we stay low? Knives out. 91% chance to get more money. A patrol coming. Just a little bit more. Get stressed. No, 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 no. Knives out. We'll be fine. Intrigue challenge. We could do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Oh god, we're so greedy. Do it again! Oh my god, do it again! Ah! Um, at this point, I think we've had enough. We've got 250 gold out of this sucker. Let's leave. Oh my god, that was so profitable. <laughs> so my gallows bait seems to have done pretty well. We've now gained the thief level as a result. That's that's great. Okay, intrigue goes up a bit. I feel like after that, we may have earned a slightly more dastardly beard or mustache for Renard. Yeah, there we go. A regal tweedly mustache. Perfect. Oh my god, we need to get an upgrade to our second. Suero over here would give me plus five in all of my skills because he's intelligent. Yes! So now I'm a 17, 13, 18, 26, 20 character. That is a very respectable stat lineup. Now let's take a look at our camp real quick and make some other decisions on what we can do. If I go to say my roaring campfire, we could continue upgrading it, which is nice. Or we could give it an internal upgrade. Trailing musicians unlock the master bard, right? Wandering poets, capering fools, and so on. Including things that are unique for us criminals. Juicy rumors. Criminal contract reward, 50%. Intrigue, 4? Yes. A master thief officer. Seems like a great idea. I don't really want to gain less gallows bait experience, though. Not yet. God, I am so very good at heists. I've got a lot of really good characters for this. There's 451 gold in there? Oh, God. 92% chance. Ugh. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, mm, stop. 300 gold is pretty good. I know it's only an 8% chance, but at some point we're really pushing our luck. God, that is so much money we're just sitting on now. I can, I can upgrade this stuff so quickly. This is great. I'm officially now a level two bandit and thief. How do I get more in poacher and trickster though? That's the real question. Oh, here's a way to get some trickster experience. Flog talismans? Uh, okay. I mean, this comes at a great time because I'll be able to go for the crime pit. Oh, I need to go down the rest of this first. Boo. All right, it's gonna be a little bit longer before I can go for crime pays. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I haven't done one of these yet. We have a bunch of shills and thieves and a cleric. Yeah, sure, easy. Oh, I love that 50% extra payout from having the juicy secrets. This is great. Awesome. All right, that's even more money. I am just, I am so evil and awesome in every possible which way. Anyway, there's really not a lot of crime to be done left in Spain. Maybe it's time to move up to France. Ah, here's some crime. Heist another treasury. Two treasuries. Oh my god, we're gonna get so rich. How much money does this sucker have? 398. That's pretty good. Stay low. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh god. Keep going. Get nervous. Okay, you know what? That's good enough. That's everything he's got. We stole every penny this guy's got. Could, can, can you imagine how this would be in multiplayer? God, you could seriously screw people over with this. I mean, there's no denying that I am a very renowned thief at this point. Wow. We also upgraded our pavilion to level 3, which means I get one more round of buildings. I should double check what other good buildings exist as a freebooter. Make sure I get the right building. Like, I like this master thief. Gain gold from battle victories, no. Man-haggler officer. Someone who's really good at ransom. Can I just, 
Yeah, I could just straight out abduct people without even needing a criminal contract. Now there's a thought. In that case, I want to get myself a baggage train. Yes. And then we'll just go ahead and travel our way up to London, because there's a lot of places I can visit here. Ooh, wait, never mind. There is plague here. Yeah, forget that. England can wait for another day. We're gonna go to the Holy Roman Empire. Parking your camp in a plague-ridden area is actually a great way to get everyone sick and dead. Like, seriously, avoid it at all costs. How do I know this? Oh, I definitely didn't learn this the hard way. No siree. So I am now a trickster. This gets me a little bit of diplomacy skill. Okay. I need to get to 40 experience in everything though, right? So I need to find ways to get more trickster XP and then, again, where do I get the poacher? Oh, you know, I'll bet you that what you need to do is go hunting as an activity and you probably are doing it illegally, right? Yeah, at the start of the hunt, you can either purchase hunting rights or you'll get the gallows bait poacher experience. Ah, okay, so this is what I do. Let's plan on, I guess, a hunt or we could do falconry. Gosh, and even hunting has like some branching paths now. Venator and Falconer, you want to get both. Wow, this is cool. And then there's legendary hunts. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I can even choose the intent, including for murder. I can take someone in my crew with me to go hunting with the express intent that I'm going to murder them. Oh my god, this is amazing. All right, so do I purchase rights? Of course not. Saw the rights, I will hunt wherever I want, which greatly increases my success chance, and helps me become a poacher. How the king immediately knows that I'm poaching in this land? I don't know, apparently he's omniscient, but okay. Oh, frick, I just murdered a lady because she wouldn't give me a room in her inn. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I, I am an evil booger, aren't I? Dude, this is actually kind of cool. All right, crime now pays double. So let's put this to the test. I am going to go and mug a prince bishop, or somebody. Somehow that only paid out 122 gold though. Shouldn't it pay out a lot more? Apparently not. Hey, question. Can I, like, murder the Kaiser for fun? I mean, I would have I would have rather, like, maybe abduct him, but that doesn't appear to be an actual option here. I'm just curious. Like, if I put the right people in charge here to boost up my success chance... Oh, I could... I could bring in other people. I was thinking that I would have to use my own folks, and I can. There are some better ones, but I'd have to pay them. Nah, this will be an entirely, like, in-house job. I mean, it could be a 95% chance success. The problem is the secrecy is really quite bad. I would need to hire somebody as an alibi. Yeah, we can use some of my advantages though to force this guy in with a bit of extra prestige and some money involved too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> however, the Kaiser has apparently um, decided to expel me from his realm. Interesting, you knew I was here, huh? Cancels all possible contracts in the HRE. Well, well, well. Now I definitely want to kill you. I'll tell you what, I can take the hints. I'll move, but that doesn't mean I'm changing my plans. Honestly, I think an 89% chance of success is pretty good. Do I need to murder an emperor? No, but imagine what an incredible accolade this is going to be on my resume. Well, well, well. Kick me out of your lands, will you? Now the emperor is dead, causing a, hopefully, massive crisis in the Holy Roman Empire. Let's go ahead and visit England. I think it's time. Get a little bit outside of the continents. You know, while the heat is on, we'll go visit Canterbury, and then we'll go visit the Tower of London and stuff. There's a lot to see. We're practically just an innocent tourist. And no one can tell otherwise. Well, I've gained everything I need now to become an experienced wanderer. Travel speed goes up. Beautiful. And we make it all the way to Scotland, just because I can. It's so weird playing this game and literally not even worrying much about the map and who owns what and who's liege of what and whatever else. Like, yeah, England just took over a bit of Ireland. Do I care? No, not really. These are the problems for kings. I am not yet the bandit king, so it matters not. Let's go for digging for dirt and then start working our way toward kidnapper. I think I mistakenly assumed that having those cages would enable abduction, but no, I'm pretty sure we have to get down here. Oh, I would love nothing better than to start abducting kings. And my crew is so good, I think we could pull it off. Now I have the kidnapper skill. Oh, and it comes at a great time. I'm now at least level two in everything with my gallows bait. Look at all those free stats. So now, am I able to levy the outcasts? No, I need 546 prestige, huh? Oh, more prestige. How do I become more prestigious quickly? 
Honestly, just like some events and stuff over time will get me there. Ugh, oh, come on, I'm only 15 prestige away, come on! Honestly, let's just go ahead and head back down to Aragon. It is time to return to the place of my birth. Except there's not enough crime to do here, or even legitimate contracts to give me some freaking prestige. Gosh dang it! Oh, here we go. This might do the job. A hero is sought to perform in a play? Look, I'll do whatever it takes in order to get my name out there. Ah, no! Right when I was literally about to finish that scheme, I get... <laughs> I get kicked out of the country again. Ah. There we go, finally! A little bit of escorting is all I needed. Oh my god, okay. That took way longer than it should have. Levy the outcasts! I shall now become the ultimate bandit benefactor. Lose three levels of fame kinda sucks. But it's fine. Let's find out how many unique men-at-arms I can get. Rally to me, wretched of the earth! So I'm basically now king of the bandits, right? So what happens if I like... D does this count as in one of those intrigue uh, missions? Do I just get some men at arms every time I do this? Oh wait, yes we did. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. We can raise the wretched and the lost, the merry men. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've actually got at least a couple thousand men who are just waiting for me to declare a war, and I could actually go try to conquer some land. That is hilarious. Even so, it's gonna take a long time to raise up the rabble for a revolution. But you know, I think there is one thing we could do that would really end this video on a high note. I want to kidnap the Pope! Weird though, not everyone in my party is willing to try this. They think this might be a little bit sacrilegious. I suppose I don't disagree, but come on. Who's ever murdered an emperor and kidnapped a Pope? Oh, but my wife just died. I think God might be angry with me. Okay, it's been like about a year and a half or so of planning. But I think we're ready to perform the abduction. 95% chance success is pretty darn good, I'd say. So let's seize the moment. I like the sound of this plan. 95% chance. Ha <laughs> ha! I've captured the Pope! It was as simple as letting some of my allies into the temple in the middle of the night. Oh! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The question becomes, what do I do with him? I mean, we could ransom him. 240 gold, that's practically nothing. Alternative. <laughs> no! But also, yes, this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, oh my god, I'm feeding the Pope to my crew. <laughs> okay, does this give you enough of an idea of the craziness of things you can do as a landless character? I've been all over Europe. I haven't had to worry one bit about a holding or loyalty or anything. I may not be a very renowned person, but I'll tell you what, I will go down in infamy as the guy who not only murdered the Holy Roman Emperor, but kidnapped and ate the Pope. Oh my god. I'm not exactly proud of what I've done, okay? I realize that that was crossing a little bit of a line, but holy crud, it is funny to see what you can do in CK3. Wow, alright. Yeah, this is a whole new way of playing Crusader Kings, and I am all about it. Finally, something that is truly unique in this game, something we've never seen before in Crusader Kings 2 or 3. Man, it is crazy fun. Are you okay, wife? When you blink like that, it makes me feel a little bit scared. Yeah, like that. Don't do not do that. Anyway, once again, thank you to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring today's video. If you guys would like to learn more about the Roads to Power DLC, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Otherwise, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.